module 15 statistical power and choosing the right sample size section 2 choosing the right sample size when you read a paper you will see this kind of a sample uh, sa sample size statement in it let us read it we choose to study three 256 subjects in each group in order to have 80 percentage power to detect 25 percentage reduction in the recurrence rate from a baseline rate of 40 percentage with a significance level of 0 0.05 two tailed so this is a cot so what does that mean this statement means so you have to know you should know how to interpret this statement so here it says the sample size you know uh, is uh, the statement about the sample size the sample size is very simple uh, it's number of the elements of the, the data set which is 256 but it depends on the power so the power is 80 percentage power you can see the highlighted one and effect size the effect size is 25 percentage reduction you know and significance level significance level is also written there it is 0 0.05 and uh, plus standard deviation because this is a uh, the fraction but if you are comparing the means then uh, you know the, the significant the standard deviation also matters so we can rewrite the same statement in a more legible manner the investigators assume that the recurrence rate is normally 40 percentage and asked whether the new treatment reduced the recurrence rate by one quarter or more down to 30 percentage or less they chose 256 subjects in each group so that if the true effect was one fourth reduction in recurrence rate, they could have 80 percentage chance of obtaining a statistically significant result defined as P is less than 0 0.05. So this statement makes a lot more sense just to make you understand how to interpret this kind of statements here. So how do you calculate the ideal sample size? There are nothing called ideal sample size. More is always better. Like I explained to you about the power, the best 100 percentage power is the best one. So same way here also the ideal sample size, the more is always better. But huge sample size is impractical in most of the situations. Investigators usually compromise with the statistical power and often choose lesser power to decide the fewer sample size. So sample size and the statistical power are directly proportional. To have a large power, you need a large sample size, while effect size or the sample size and the effect size are inversely proportional. So uh, you know, for to detect a very, very small minute effect size, you need a huge sample or if you have a huge effect size you don't need that much sample so that is the relation between these two terms so to compute the required sample size for comparing the means so well this calculations all depends upon what is your objective in if your objective is to compare the means like for example to do a t-test so how can you calculate the ideal sample size so a, a part of the experimental design you can decide the required sample size given certain effect size, standard deviation and statistical power. So the power of 80 percentage is arbitrarily and commonly used, I told you that earlier. Effect size is the smallest difference between the means that you want to detect. This is the width of the confidence interval, it depends upon your context, you know. So that effect size depends on your context. So the equation to calculate this is that n is equal to 2c in bracket s by w bracket close squared. So what does that mean? n is the number of samples that you require. 2 multiplied by c and c is a constant that depends upon the required power and significance level. So if you know the power and significance level you can just pick up that uh, the c the constant multiplied with standard deviation and w w is the effect size or the width of the confidence interval or the effect size or the difference between the means the expected difference between the mean is effect size squared so sample size calculations depends on one fuzzy estimate that is standard deviation no one can predict it what the standard deviation of your samples will be right while three arbitrary estimates including alpha and the power 
So it is therefore fuzzy and ambiguous with low reproducibility that you should know that sample size calculations are fuzzy and it has got very low reproducibility. Now this is a handy table to look up the value of C, the, the, the multiplier or the constant. So you can see that uh, uh, significance level is put up on different columns while different rows are the power. So you can simply pick up. So usually we go with constants 7.8 because 80 percentage power is commonly used and significance level commonly used is 0 0.05. So it is 7.8 but well you can choo choose that depends upon as I told you you are choosing the significance level depends upon the relative consequences of uh, type 1 error that is false positive or type 2 error that is false negatives. So let us do uh, one example. In this case, we would like to know how much would be the adequate sample size for the human blood pressure measurement, you know. So you can compare the mean BP of Kerala with that of the Punjab. So we, we know the mean BP of Kerala. We also know mean BP of Punjab and we also know the respective, uh, you know, the uh, what is that standard DV, expected standard deviation or so we know it. So how do you compare that? So we will also choose the significance level at 0 0.05 and the power is at 80 percentage. So uh, how will you calculate that? So it's basically your effect size is 5 mg uh, mm uh, hg the mercury 5 mg, uh, mm is the effect size that you are expecting and standard deviation is 10 mm hg. So we know standard deviation is 10. And we also know that the power is 5 just plug into this equation n is equal to 2c multiplied by s by w whole square and let us do this work on the whiteboard all right now let us write the required sample size formula here the uh, this required sample size n is equal to 2c multiplied by s by w all square so here s is standard deviation while w is the effect size so what we know we let us write down here so we know the c the constant we by looking up into the table it is 7.8 at the uh, power of 80 percentage and significance level of 0 0.05 percent the constant is going to be 7.8 because the constant depends upon both the power as well as the significance level now standard deviation is also known in the, this problem it's 10 and the effect size is also known, effect size is 5. So all we have to do is to plug into this equation. So to get it, for example, uh, let us let's do this calculation. 2 multiplied by 7.8, that is this part, into standard deviation is 10 upon 5. 5 is the effect size squared. All right. So that is equal to 15. 0.6 that is this one multiplied by 4 that is this one 4 so that is equal to 62.4 so 62.4 is whenever the fraction comes it's always secure to uh, uh, go with the next integer 63 because we are going for the sample size so if you stick with the 62 sample only you might end up with lesser number of sample so it's always better go with the 63 so 63 is the number of samples required to get uh, that effect size uh, you know the effect size of 5 given that uh, to get the power of 10 uh, 80 percentage and the confidence level of uh, 95 percentage uh, while the expected standard deviation is 10 so we need to have 63 samples in it so let us now look at the second example, example number two. An investigator hypothesized the average weight of the man is larger than that of the female. But how can he or she can prove it, you know, in statistically? So to prove it uh, or, or disprove it, you know, now how many samples is required? So it's all about the sample size calculation. And in this case, assume that the standard deviation is equal to the width you know or the effect size so just plug into the same equation that is 2c multiplied by s by w whole squared so with the power is 99 percentage and alpha is 0 0.01 so in this case you know because please read that statement once again here it is says that how many men and women 
uh, she need to wait to be really sure that the risk of having false positive and false negative is only one percentage so risk of having false positive is one percentage risk of having false negative is also one percentage so risk of having false positive has to do with significance level so one percentage means 0 0.01 while uh, you know the chance of having false negative has to do with uh, you know uh, of course with the power so this here the power is also uh, you know 99 percentage so only one percentage is the you know so you have to reduce it right beta exactly so it is basically 100 minus 99 is equal to 1 so that is what the uh, having the false negative so so here the power is 99 percentage while alpha is 0 0.01 let us do this work once again. All right, so in this problem, the equation is all same. It's only that C is 24 while W is, S is equal to W. So S is equal to W. So that is what it says. So let us plug into this equation. So that is basically 2 multiplied by C is 24. So 24 in bracket S by W. So S by W because S is equal to W, the so S by W is going to be 1 squared so basically 2 into 24 is the answer that is basically 48 so we need to have 48 samples so the required sample size is 48 in order to get that uh, that much the power and that much uh, 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 confidence level uh, of 99 each you know 99 percentage of power and confidence level of 99 percentage to get you need to get 48 number of sample that means each group should have 48 so total it's uh, you know it's 48 plus 48 is 96 so that much sample is what is required so this table is a C lookup table which I refer to you so this is the power is 99 percent alpha is 0 0.01 in this case so as you can see that uh, the power if you look at that uh, you know it is no more 7.8 but it's something else so you have to find this C value and then you will have to uh, C is basically 24 as you can see here. So 24 is a C and then just plug into the equation and let us solve it. So there is an online calculator to calculate sample size is accessible uh, at that uh, URL. Please click on that link and check it out. So just, just have to insert all those parameters including effect size and expected uh, effect size, expected standard deviation and uh, you know then it will uh, number as well the, the number will be calculated by this software so it's very very easy and if you drag down then it will also say you uh, alternate scenarios so that means that if you are okay with le lesser power uh, how much would be the number required so as if you don't have that much uh, power demand if you're okay with lesser then definitely the samples sample size will be lesser as well and uh, if your significance level is also lesser for example instead of 0 0.05 it's only 0 0.1 the sample size required is also will be less so you know all those alternate scenarios will also be presented in that handy online calculator so deciding the effect size for comparing means expected effect size for expected difference between the group means or the width of ci is hard to decide prior hand but there are guidelines by Cohen is a famous statistician so according to his guideline for small differences between the group means one-fifth the standard deviation can be chosen as the effect size so for medium differences between the group means half the standard deviation can be chosen as the effect size and for the large difference between the group means uh, you know 0.8 times the standard deviation can be chosen as the effect size so these are all guidelines and don't uh, be rigorous to it these are just arbitrary guidelines and these guidelines also means that you know you can just uh, calculate it how much is that uh, you know the, the required sample size for different scenarios for example uh, you would need you know 16 in each group to detect a large effect because these are all directly proportional what his statement is you can simply calculate it to get the number 16 for each group if you're doing for example a t-test and if you want to detect a large effect get 16 each 64 each if you want to detect a medium effect so the medium effect is basically when you take it as a half of the st as the effect size you know so this number you will get it 65 in each group and 400 in each group 
uh, if you expect your effect to be small. So use these as rough guidelines only. Actual sample size needs to be calculated formally using the formula which I told you. And you can also estimate the standard deviation and effect size. So if you have really no idea to expect for the standard deviation, uh, in the case of effect size coins guidelines can be used but for the standard deviation, you know, you have to do a pilot study with n is equal to uh, 12. So you can choose 12 and do a pilot study and check out what is the standard deviation. Then you can use that standard deviation as an estimate uh, for plugging into the equation to calculate the actual number of samples required. So some thoughts while deciding the sample size include if you are planning for a survey or longitudinal experiment, be sure to consider dropout. So many of these initial uh, enrollments will dropping out. So that will have uh, repercussions on your data analysis at the later stage. Power and significance level are not always set to 80% and 0.05. These are mere arbitrary values. The actual values should be decided based on relative consequences of type 1 and type 2 errors. Ad hoc sequential sample size calculation for, that is starting with a very small then slowly increase, increase, increase till you get the p value which is less than 0 0.05 that is wrong practice. You know that is also known as dynamic sample size estimation. Uh, this, is, uh, this is also regarded as a scientific misconduct. So be wary of it. It's cheating. So in summary, sample size depends on the standard deviation, statistical power, effect size and significance level. Sample size and statistical power are directly proportional to have a large power. You need a large sample size. You know if you want to have a large power, you need to have a large sample size. So sample size and effect size are inversely proportional. If you want to detect tiny effect, you need a large sample size. Sample size calculations also known as power analysis depend on one fuzzy estimate that is standard deviation while three arbitrary estimate including effect size, alpha and the power. It is therefore fuzzy and ambiguous with low reproducibility. If you have no idea what to expect for the standard deviation and the effect size, sample size calculation is not possible. So you need to do a uh, you know, pilot study or you can use Cohen's guidelines. Ad hoc sequential sample size calculation starting with small size and gradually increasing the size till it reaches a significant level is wrong, misleading and constitutes scientific uh, misconduct. So be wary of it. Thank you so much for listening to this module. I hope you enjoyed it and please contribute in the discussion section and solve the graded and ungraded tests. See you soon.